Okay, here we're going to look at two different methods for assigning the value of convertible bonds or convertible debt. And the first method will be the residual or incremental method, and then we're going to compare that with the relative or fair value method or proportional method. So what we have to do when we have convertible debt, that's debt that the bondholders can convert into uh, equity or common stock of the company, we have to assign a uh, liability or debt amount to that convertible security and also an equity portion that uh, we have to assign. So that bond has to be divided up in this case between the e debt and equity portion and we're going to look at it uh, when we issue the bond. We're going to make these comparisons between these two methods here when we issue the bond. And we're going to be using uh, for our basis here uh, the bonds par value. So we're going to be making our debt in equity proportions based on the bonds par value. And the reason we have to allocate the, de uh, the debt and equity portion of this bond is because it represents both a liability and an equity to the company. All right, we're going to start out with this residual or incremental method and we'll go through an example. But before we do that, I want to point out here that I'm using this bond par value as our basis here for allocating the debt and equity portion of this convertible bond in this case. And uh, if the bond was issued for a greater or lesser amount than this par value, then you would substitute that in the equation instead of the par value. But this residual or incremental method is used when we do not know both the debt portion and the equity portion. So we're going to try to measure in, usually in this case, it's the debt portion here that we could do. So we will start out and we'll determine what our debt portion is on this uh, convertible bond here, and then we can assign the equity amount. And that equity amount is really the conversion rights of this bond. So let's start out here with this residual and incremental method, and I'll go through an example. All right, let's go through our example here, and we're going to start out here when the bonds are issued. So we get a five-year, $100,000, 7% convertible bond, and you can convert each bond into 25 shares of common stock. And the current market value of those stocks are $3.50 per share. So the first thing we have to do here is we have to determine the liability portion of that bond. And we do that by taking a similar bond without the conversion feature, and we would discount it back to its present value today. So for the example here, I took that similar bond and I discounted it back here to $96,150. That's its present value. So we'd increase our bonds payable amount by that uh, amount here. Now, we have to calculate the equity portion that we have to assign to that bond. And we do that by taking the bond's par value amount here, and in this case, it would be $100,000, or we debit cash for that amount here as our asset. And then to determine the equity portion here, and in, in this case, it would be in a surplus account, and it would be the conversion rights of those bonds. And we would do that by taking the par value of the bond less its liability portion here, and the difference here would be, uh, in this case, would be $3,850. We would credit our additional paid in capital for $3,850. So here we assigned the debt portion of our bond liability here and also our equity portion of our bond liability. Okay, let's look at the relative fair value method or the proportional method, and we'll use the same example as we did with the uh, residual method here. And so in this case, we have an assigned value here. We have a known value for the debt portion or those uh, convertible bonds in this case, and we also know what the equity value is of the, uh, in this case, the conversion rights. And let's just go down here and look at them. So the known, uh, we've used the similar bond without a uh, conversion feature, and we determined that that bond would be worth $96,150. And then that fair value of the conversion rights, we know that they're worth $2,900. That's their market value here. 
So let's go up here and figure out how we um, would allocate the, the amounts between the uh, debt portion and the equity portion. So we take these known amounts here, uh, the present value of those bonds here at $96,150 without the conversion rights, and then we take the fair value of those conversion rights at $2,900. Total them, we come up with $99,050 here. So to figure out our relative percentage between the um, these known amounts here, the debt and equity. We divide, in this case, the 96,150 by the 99,050 uh, total amount here to come up with a 97% assigned to the uh, debt portion of those convertible bonds. And then for the uh, equity portion here, those conversion rights, we would divide the 2,900 by the total amount here of 99,050 and we'd come up with 3%. So we got a total here of 100% assigned between the debt and equity portions. So now to uh, assign our uh, equity, our debt and equity portions up here, uh, based on the, in this case, the hundred thousand dollar par value, we would take those relative percentages. In this case, for the uh, liability or the uh, convertible debt here, we take the ninety-seven percent that we assign times the hundred thousand dollar bond par value, and we come up with ninety-seven thousand here. And then for the equity portion, we take that relative percentage of 3% times that uh, bond par value here of 100000 and we come up with $3,000. So here we allocated the debt portion and the equity portion based on a relative percentage here of these known amounts that we uh, uh, started with here. And we uh, allocated those to these bond par value or what we use, whatever the issue price on that bond would be. So this is how we use the, uh, would calculate the relative fair market value uh, based on the proportion or the proportional uh, method here for allocating this debt and equity portion on this convertible debt. And that would be at the issuance of this bond here. Okay, just to summarize and make a point here, regardless which method you use, the residual incremental method or the relative fair value method, you have to be consistent. You have to use that same method throughout when you're making your general entries and calculations. So if you started with the residual method, you have to use that throughout all your uh, conversions and retirements. And the same with the relative fair value method. You start with that, you have to use that method throughout all your conversion, conversions and retirements of this bond. So that's just a summary here between the residual method and the relative, relative fair value method.